It's uncompromising, addictive, and often unforgiving, with an adrenaline rush like no other. There is no practice, no second chances. It's the ultimate motorsport competition on gravel. It is rally, and this is the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Welcome to the 2015 season opening round coming to you from the Quit Forest Rally in Western Australia. In today's show, we'll preview the season ahead with our resident rally experts, Dean Herridge and Ross Dunkerton. Bring you the highlights of the cars that won rally championships 40 years ago. And feature the Armour All STP Power Stage. This year, including both two and four wheel drive. Five bonus points on offer for both categories. A great way to start the championship points hall here in Bustleton, three hours south of Perth. Ross Duncan, what a fabulous part of the world to start our championship off. It certainly is, and look at the weather. Spectacular. You know, Dino, this event is the longest running event in the ARC. You know, there's a lot of heritage here in West Australia. This is where it really all began. And for me, it did anyway, yeah. because, you know, I, was, I managed to win a couple here. You did manage to win a couple, which gives you great experience. Well, we're great to have you back on board. Let's go back 12 months to last year. You are at every round. What was your take on the series? Two guys really fought it out, but there was a couple of guys coming up through the ranks as well. There certainly was. Uh, Scott Petter and Brendan Reeves, and of course, Scott is not going to be with us this year because we've got a deal with the uh, World Rally Championship. But the guy that stood out was young Mackenzie. Like, he was on fire towards the end, and he's going to start here, and he's going to have a lot of competition. So he might be part of that new history talk about starting here in Perth. When we, we go back and talk about this year moving forward, Eli Evans, Simon Evans, brothers, both former champions, they're here in very similar cars. This is the big matchup that we've all been waiting for, isn't it? It certainly is, and you know, people that are involved in rallying know just how quick Simon was, yeah. you know, and, and it still is, <laughs> I reckon he still is, and the two brothers together. Like, oh, that's going to be right on. So Dunko, with you know, Eli in the car, do you think he's going to help that team move forward and develop that car to be more competitive? I think he will because he's a very good driver and he knows how to set a motor car up, so he will be up there. And of course, we've got you know, his brother in the proven Honda, which Eli used to campaign a couple of years ago. That's proven, has plenty of power, and you spoke about how good Simon is. But we talked about Mackenzie at the start last year. You know, he was one of the fastest guys, taking on the guys chasing the championship. What do you think he's going to do here? First time to Perth, we spoke about it, you know, the history here. Is he the dark horse in the field, or really the guy who's coming through? Well, as we all know, it's very difficult to drive in West Australia because of the ball bearing gravel. It'll take him three or four stages to settle in. But I think he's got huge potential. And of course, we've got Molly Taylor thrown in the mix too, of course, with the, with the Renault. So, and that car is very well developed. And what you're talking about there is she's taken over the championship winning Renault as Scott Petter campaign and won his first Australian championship, a dream for him. She takes that car on, so that is the proven package. Now, this is a big test for Molly herself, isn't it? She's got a lot of international experience, but here, once again, in a real big fight for, for outright. It certainly is. And of course, the four-wheel drive national series, big change. Big change. It changes in the rules, and as a matter of fact, we're going to allow maxi cars in, and we may see that at the next round. Mark Petter's got one of them lined up. We've got a former champion in Justin Dowrock up in four-wheel drive. And we've got Mick Patton, who was in last year's outright championship. He's stepping into the national series again, four-wheel drive, where he's come from, and a whole heap of locals. You're a local, you won on this event. It's a key event from that point of view, isn't it? It certainly is, and of course the uh, young gun from here. Dylan King. Yeah. We've yeah. got Brad Markovic, John O'Dowd, last year's champion, Doug Tostevin. And when we speak about the unique roads here, those guys can really take it to the ARC regulars. And, and you have a feeling about if you can win here, you can win anywhere, don't you? And talking about champions, we've got the Hall of Fame again this year, which is a great show to go to. One of the highlights, of course, last year, Ari Barton, and this year, another you know, big world name, four, four times yep. champion. You are... Can't get yeah, you are. Can't get <laughs> Thanks to Finnair, he's coming across to be our special guest speaker. It's a fabulous night, isn't it, Dunko? Something not to miss if you're a rally fan. Even if you're not a rally fan, anybody who's involved in motorsport, you've got to come and listen to this guy. It is a great night. We're talking about great, this event should be great, Dunko. I know you're excited. We're in for a big championship, and it all starts here with, of course, the STP and Armour All Power Stage. It's going to be great. I am excited. <laughs> We're looking forward to it. A big change in 2015 with both outright and four-wheel drive getting the chance to bag extra points. Just three places are on offer for a maximum of five bonus points. Only one qualifying run is allowed, so there's just one shot. The fastest three will then line up for the one-off chance at grabbing the points. 
This is the same venue as last year, but after significant changes to the foreshore area by Bustleton Council, the Armorall STP power stage now encompasses some of the main street surrounding Barnard Park. From the start, it's a 180 degree left leading to Marine Terrace. Navigating the traffic islands will be top priority before cars return through the park and a right-hander leading to the end of the first sector. From the Can-Am split, it's a flat-out sprint through the Coates Higher speed trap back to where they started. A further pass on the same road, over a kilometre and a half, marks the second split at the Polaris Barrel. Crews will need to execute a handbrake turn, returning in the other direction. The final sector comes up midway along the Armorall Strait, a total distance of 3.76 k's. Ross Dunkerton's out on the circuit right now. We'll catch up with him after the break about just what it will take to win this first ever Armorall STP for Will Drive Power Stage. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. It's a stunning day here in Bustleton. And Dean Herridge is with Ross Dunkerton, who's been checking out the power stage. Ross Dunkerton, the five times national champ. No one better to speak to about our Armour Oil and STP power stage. And first one of the year, mate, how was it? Exhilarating. This stage has been run many, many times. They have altered it slightly, and there's still that tricky around the barrel, there's a hairpin and a lot of square corners, but the guys that are going to win this, as you know, are the guys with the tarmac experience. The technique is to come up, brake heavily, get off the brakes, turn it in and then gun it. Trouble is the rally guys here just drive it like me. Come in at the corner, understeer, that's a drama. Fastest bloke will be the guy with the most experience on tarmac. And you've got to be smooth, don't you, that guy? Smooth as the go. go. Rusty, it's over to you. We've got the four-wheel drives for the first time competing in the Armour Oil and SCP Power State. Over to you to recap the highlights. The highlight of qualifying was the last spot available. Locals Robert Webber and Brad Markovic were split by a couple of imports. Henry Knott from South Australia and Mark Hedder from Victoria. All four separated by less than half a second, but none could make the cut. Nick Patton stepped back into a four-wheel drive for the first time in two years, again for Repco, but wasn't yet up to the pace. John O'Dowd suffered engine failure, sending his team back to Perth in search of a piston. And Scott McKenzie couldn't match the speed of the others in his freshly rebuilt Impreza WRX. No such problems for Doug Tostevin and Dylan King, though. Both locals, always quick, but this time separated by former Aussie rally champs Justin Dow and Matt Lee on their return to the top competition after two years away. So our three finalists are assured of points. They are Doug Tostevin, Justin Dow and Dylan King. And they're about to face off to see who will take maximum points in the Armorall STP Power Stage. So our third fastest qualifier in the four-wheel drive series is last year's West Australian champs, Doug Toss and Tamiana. It's nice work to get in, mate. Yeah, I'm very happy to have uh, qualified and get, in a, get a shot at this stage. It's great fun. Now, you're, you're known to being very flamboyant, and around here it's a bit of a balance between speed and, you know, being neat and tidy. Ross Duncan was around here earlier. What's your attitude now you've made the final? Yeah, well, my, my crew don't like the flamboyant style of strict instructions, do not damage the car. All right, well, you've made it in. Congratulations. Have a real clean and uh, tidy run. Yeah, thanks, guys. Nice words from Dean Herridge as we are good to go. Nice start by Tostevin. Slides through there, beautifully done. The fourth year of competition for this pairing. They've been good friends for a long time. Doug Tostevin and Tammy Adams, little neutral the car. They're a bit of understeer on entry, tidy on the exit. Dean said, reigning WA Rally Champions. They clinched that in October last year. After a, a busy and, and uh, exciting season there in WA. Fierce competition, winning two of the six rounds at Can-Am. On the power, nice and early. In the coach speed zone they come now. And that's the attitude that uh, Doug was talking about with Dean before they got going. Again, tidy, neutral through there, looks nice. 
began rallying back in 1988 when he was just 18 years of age. That was in a Datsun, but he's been very loyal to Subaru since 1995. No issues with the radio, we should point out too. There's just minimal... That is time for the barrel, yeah? Yep. A little bit of, as you can hear there, a little bit of comment from Tamara, but she's effectively letting Doug just get on with it. Back at Can-Am once again. And again, very early on the power. Bit of tyre smoke coming from those buff tyres into the coach speed zone. Look at the car there, beautiful. And big lock-up, big lock-up. He goes very deep at the Polaris hairpin. Different line there when you go the reverse way around Can-Am. Yes, Technic Subaru team. We're hearing word back there from some of our crew on that point. The car may have coughed at the hairpin, so is there an issue here for Tostevin as we work towards the finish of this power stage? Almost inside of the line. Overflying finish. Oh, he's missed a gear. Tostevin's missed a gear there. We get the benchmark time though at 2.36. Oh. What happened? It ran out of fuel because it's too low on fuel when we handbraked. Doug Tostevin, very spectacular from what I could see. Yeah, well look, it was all really good up to that point. And then um, I might have just had a little bit low on fuel and picked up some air at the, the last hairpin and just cut out for a second. Just a little bit disappointing. It was other than that, pretty good. It was a good run. These stages get your adrenaline going, though, don't they? I mean, I can see you already got a bit of a shake on this you know, pressure you're driving well. It's unbelievably uh, fun in here, isn't it? Oh, look, you can have all the plan in the world before the uh, flag <laughs> drops, and then, uh, yeah, once you, once you start, it's anything goes. Mate, it's all straight. You've got a time on the board. Good luck, eh? Thanks, guys. So no issues on the intercom, as we said, but Doug suggesting some sort of fuel pickup issue. Maybe not quite enough in the tank. And the missed gear, the missed shift, gritting his teeth and willing the car to the line. We have a benchmark, but the two fastest qualifiers yet to come. Will Justin Dowell be able to knock Doug Tostevin out of the Armour All STP power stage? We'll find out after this. You're watching the Armour All STP power stage, coming to you from the Quit Forest Rally in WA. Dean Herridge is with our second fastest qualifiers, taking part in their first ever power stage. Former national champs here, Justin Dow and Matt Lee, mate, you made the qualifier here, fantastic run. Yeah, no mistakes yet, so keep it nice and smooth here and we should be all right. This is sort of your debut here for uh, a power stage, and you've sort of wedged between a couple of locals, so uh, what's the plan? Uh, not to get sucked into the race and end up in the concrete barriers like I normally do. <laughs> like you normally do. Don't talk yourself out of it, but good clean run you need around here. And you've got the speed, but it is hard around here, particularly with those buff rally tyres. It's not a natural feel for a tarmac stage, is it? No, nah, not at all. Not a natural feel tarmac for gravel rally drivers at all. But um, look, you know, we'll go as fast as we can without taking any silly risk. Um, it's good that uh, Mark and uh, Henry aren't in it, so <laughs> at least we'll get some point advantage. Yeah, exactly right. That's what it's all about, the points. Good luck. Thank you. Former national champs splitting some fast West Australian drivers. Awesome to have Justin Dowell and Matt Lee back in the game. We're away. Turn three left narrow. 200. He said he wanted to keep it off the walls, away from those barriers. But the eyes suggest a different approach right now. Great combination, these guys. They won the title in 2011 and triple. Victorian Rally Champions as well, 05, 06 and 07. Tidy there, maybe a little on the conservative side. Let's check the split here as they come around Can-Am. Relative to Tostevin, it's down, but not by much. Right, 200, keeping right at the barrel and doing another lap. 200, break three left. Not sliding so much there through the coach speed zone. A bit later under brakes at this point. He's starting to warm up. You get the feeling, Justin Dow, really beginning to push now. 
little bit of smoke under brakes there. Maybe just too deep, didn't quite arrest the speed into the left-hander. 150. Huck three right. Active Rally Sport crew, they've been together for years, he and Matt Lee. Matt Lee born into a, a rally family. First competed in an historic rally in 93 and has done things like the Australian Safari and the Round Australia Rally 2 at Can Am now. As he goes much wider this time down. Right, 150, the brake cap in the left around the drum. Through the coach speed zone once again. Look at the attitude of the car. Not quite as wild as Tostevin. And he's taking a very different line of the Polaris hairpin. He's down though. That's the significant thing. In this final sector, can Justin Dowell and Matt Lee find a way to move to the top of the board? Fighting the car by the looks of it. You can see him. Oh, just catches it there. 100. He's pushing. Dowell is pushing here. But it's as though he's grappling with the car for some reason. Almost inside of the Armour All finish line now. For Justin Dowell and Matt Lee in the Mitsubishi. There's the markup. And it doesn't look like it's going to be enough, but he does get some time back. Brakes don't work anywhere near as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where the dips are open. <laughs> sort of Did forgot. you leave them open? Yes. Yeah, so. Just a doubt. You're not going to believe it. You missed it by 0.4 of a second. Just. Yeah, I made a bit of a mistake. I left the diffs open thinking it would help with turning, but uh, under braking, the car just wanted to step out on me. So it was a bit of a mistake, but it doesn't matter. I still had fun. You certainly did, mate, and the crowd absolutely loved it. So well done for that. Thank you. So that explains it for you. Stepping out as he approached that Polaris hairpin. We thought that he was just fighting it a little. The key thing, the main thing, as they head into the forest stages, they have a nice, tidy car and a good chance at points. So it's the young West Australian guns here, Dylan King and Lee Tierney, mate. Well done, fastest qualifiers. And those two just had a run through 0.4 of a second apart. So it's, it's on for young and old. Yeah, can't wait to get out of there. Uh, we had a great qualifying. Um, me and Tony, Tony are very surprised with our efforts in qualifying. Um, we've had pretty bad runs here before with a pretty bad time. So really good to have a great qualifying and we're looking forward to it. What do you think it was about this qualifying? What did you do different maybe from previous years that got the time on the board? Um, been doing a bit of go-karting, so a bit more used to the go all the whole tarmac sort of side of it. And uh, new engine, it's, it's going great. The car's wonderful, so can't wait to get out there. Well, mate, keep that form going and good luck. See if you can knock them off. Thank you. He's got great memories of this event 12 months ago as well, Dylan King. He was the best of the fierce West Australian competitors. And he wants to do the same at the Quit Forest Rally in 2015. Nice start. 150. A little bit of a brake lock up there. Voice you hear is of Lee Tierney. And if you followed the coverage in recent years, he's a, a familiar voice, a familiar face in co-driving terms in this sport. 100. 100 hairpin left. Got a big year ahead business-wise, he says, but he wants to focus on this first at Can-Am. Look at the attitude of the car. And crucially, he's ahead of his rival, Tostevin, by a fraction. He's never come up some issue here by the looks of it. Left three. The speed's down as they come through the Coates higher speed zone relative to their rivals. Is there a problem here for Dylan King? The 19 year old checking the gauges as he works up through the gearbox. Maybe he's recovered here somehow. 100. Since that victory here 12 months ago, he's been a bit up and down. They rolled the car at Boddington and then they had engine issues at Collie in the WA Championship. Looks nice here through Can Am once again. So he, he seems to have some speed, some power back. There was concern in that cockpit at about this point, one lap ago. At Polaris, it's beautifully executed, but look at the damage. Bottom right of your screen, that's really telling 
So the middle sector has hurt this pairing, but we're not sure yet why. Clark of the course, Ross Tapper said, there is huge competition among the WA guys, and so it is between Tostevin and Dylan King. They had not come up against Justin Dow before. Awesome to have the four-wheel drives as a part of this. It's become a showpiece at the beginning of each round of the Australian Rally Championship, and the four-wheel guys, four-wheel drive guys, I should say, are really enjoying it. Well done. 50 right three. He's down, but clearly hamstrung by some sort of problem. Got a miss, though. Dela, mate, you just missed it by a couple of seconds. Talk us through your run. Uh, we had a terrible run. We had a good start. Uh, got to the hairpin, came out of the hairpin. The engine started like feel like it started seizing up. It was really, really grabbing. So uh, we backed off a bit, turned the anti lag off, and uh, all of a sudden it, it built back up again. Uh, so we got back on it, but uh, it wasn't enough to do anything. So bad luck, but oh well. Nice. Let's uh, change it all in the, in the stages tomorrow. Exactly right, mate. Well done for getting in, and good luck tomorrow. Smart work by Dylan King and Lee Tierney on the run to deal with that and to try and actually find a, a second or a second and a half. Here he is here, realising that that issue had confronted them and they were still able to fight back for a few points in the power stage. Doug Toss with Tammy Adams, you did it. You first one off, but it means you have to wait. Yeah, um, I'm very happy to do that. Um, Dylan, he, he drove really well and uh, I was watching him. I thought maybe he could do it and then he made a meal of the handbrake turn up there. So all those years my misspent use in McDonald's car park doing handbrake turns, it, it paid off. I knew it. I told my mum it would be useful for something. There you have it, the inaugural Armour All STP Power Stage winners, Doug Tostevin and Tammy Adams collecting the bonus five points. The Outright Power Stage final is coming up next. We'll be back in just a few moments. You're watching the Armour All STP Power Stage here in Busselton, Western Australia. The four-wheel drive competition has been won. Now it's the turn of the two-wheel drive outright competitors. Ross Duncan and the four-wheel drives, and I don't know if they took our advice on board, they were reasonably smooth, but wow, spectacular. They certainly were, Dean, and you can see the crucial part of this track is getting around that barrel. Those two leading cars did it. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the two-wheel drives. We're talking about a bit more horsepower of the four-wheel drives, but they're carrying extra weight. So a power-to-weight ratio, the front-wheel drives should be as quick, but can they get round that barrel as good as Dougie? Yeah, well, that will be yet to be seen, and it is all about our outright cars now. And over to you, Rusty, to recap the highlights. Thanks, Dean. As expected, the outright competitors couldn't launch as quickly out of the hairpins and tight corners, but fastest qualifier Simon Evans gave it a good go. It was the Volvo that slowed Molly Taylor, breaking the steering in her first competitive outing behind the wheel of the Renault. It's obviously not ideal, but you know, the car was actually feeling really, really good. I just got on the power a little bit too early coming out of one of the corners and um, glanced through the concrete wall. We were close, I thought we were getting away with it. If you drive around this stuff too easy, you don't learn anything. So now, now we know that, we learned that lesson and now we'll be right. A clean run for Steve McKenzie in the Opticote Fiesta, but just not quick enough despite cutting corners at every mark. The big news was Eli Evans, the number one factory driver for Citroen, just missed the cut to three, leaving teammate Tony Sullins and Adrian Coppen, also in a DS3, to fight out the final. So Adrian Coppen, Tony Sullins and Simon Evans line up for the first championship points in the Armour All STP Power Stage for 2015. Adrian Coppen and Aaron Kelly, mate, well done. Good job to get in. Star started field and you qualify. Well done. Yeah, really happy with the run. Uh, everything just worked out well. The, the car felt good and look, I've got a lot more confidence this year, second year round in the car. So um, it's a perfect start and we'll see what we can do here. What is the plan from here? I mean, you've got last year's teammate with you in the same sort of car and then, of course, a former champ back. Are you just going to get your run out of the way and see how it goes or you got a little bit of a you know, trick up your sleeve? Uh, look, you know, I'm very lucky. I've got uh, a bit, bit of mentoring in between from Neil to tell me what to do right and what to do wrong. So, um, look, we'll just go out and do our thing and, and see where we end up. But, you know, to drag at least one point out of this would be great and head into the forest tomorrow. Mate, well done for getting in and good luck around here. Thanks, Dino. Cheers. Yeah, it's a really good result before the rally proper even begins. Well done to Adrian Coppen. Start 52. It struggled a little bit off the line there. Remember, we're now in 
front wheel drive or two wheel drive mode. So it's a different attack, a different approach from the drivers. Beautifully presented car. And some of the stuff he's been posting on social media, he's super excited about the 2015 season, Adrian Coppen. Late three right. Clip that inside curb by the looks of it. But the point there was he wanted to keep the car away from the wall on the outside. One left. 200. Down to the Can-Am hairpin. Little bit of push on entry, goes wide, close to those barriers. 200, last barrel. Through the STP speed zone. Neat. Tidy, very tidy. You heard him talking about that mentoring before the start of the run and the impact that's had. Three left narrows. Push, bit of push there, trying to get the car through fast. Late three right. Again, he clips that inside curb. One Tight line there, deliberately so. Trying to straight line it as much as he can, right down to the hairpin here. Can Am once again lifts that left rear wheel, trying to get the car turned. One thirty. Left entry, head in, one right around barrel. Aaron Kelly sounding so calm. Attacks the barrel, the Polaris hairpin from the other side. On the gas, nice and early, and smokes those front wheels. Left entry, late hairpin, one right, neat. 180. Late three. And it pushes once again at Can Am. But looks nice through there though. 140. Three right, very neat. Into the final sector now. This will be the benchmarker. Will it be enough for Coppen to walk away with more than one point? He's assured of that at least. Flying finish, 50. Three right. Clips that Bollard by the looks of it on the left, so he used all of the road right to the finish line. How he feels about this, it seemed to build as the stage went on. Fluffed the start up a bit and uh, his corner over here, the one Neil was getting stuck into me, I still didn't get it right, but uh, <laughs> look, I don't know, we'll see. I think the, the hairpin felt okay, like we ran a little bit wide, but yeah. the momentum was there, so I guess we'll just uh, wait and see what, what these other two do. It's difficult in these cars. I mean, talk us through that handbrake. You've got to go through, you know, you've got sequence, you've got to get down the box, and they're quite tall geared, so they are hard at low speed, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. You've got to really, like, get the speed washed off but keep enough momentum to get the car flick around but get on the power early enough to uh, keep the momentum out or you sort of just bog down and then you start from scratch again. So we'll see how we go. Mate, good job for getting there. You've got the time on the board. That's the beautiful thing. Now let's see how the other two go. Thanks, Dino. Cheers. And we'll take a look at that start again on the Kumo Tyre replay was where he lost it to begin with, but he did that typically through the left hand, clipping that curb. Was happy, as he said, at the Polaris hairpin. Look at him on the gas, nice and early, pushes off the exit, but manages to keep it away from the bail. Can Tony Sullins beat his time? We'll find out after the break when we return to the Quit Forest Rally in Bustleton. Welcome back to the Armourall STP Power Stage from West Australia. Dean Herridge is on the start line with our second fastest qualifier. Tony Salas and Julia Barclay, well done mate. Second in the qualifying run. Good job. Yeah, very surprising. I um, I haven't done much in tarmac as you know what happened last time we were here, so um, yeah, no, I'm pretty happy. The car's good. Saying that, that's a little bit to do with the cars and the package you do here. You I mean you've got great pedigree on uh, tarmac. You've won Target Tasmania before. There's no mean feat. So when you got the package right, you know, I think you know you can do it. Yes, and I'm probably a little bit too stiff at the moment. The car's not. It's push understeering. I can't get the back to, to give me enough front traction. If you know what I mean. So I'm struggling a little bit there. So with that in mind, what's the plan around here? Then you're going to go for the time? No, I just don't cop it up. Ah, so he says. Good luck regardless, mate. Thank you. Three simple two, words. One. Keep it tidy and don't bend it. He's away. Once again with Julia Barkley alongside him for the 2015 season. They're a good combination. As Dean said before, they've had success at tarmac events like Target Tasmania. Turn 
the stages of this nature aren't foreign to them. 100. Pushes there, goes very close to the barriers. He's trying, Tony Sullins. The difference in the qualifying run between he and Adrian Coppin was just three tenths. Half in left. 100. We'll see how he is relative to Coppin. As they battle for points, he's up significantly. It's a second. The advantage is a second. 100. Tidy through the coat's higher speed zone. 100. And that speed identical, incidentally, to Adrian Coppin. Both of them, 144 k's an hour at that point. Hard to pull the car up as he came through the last corner. Turn left three narrow. 100. Late right three. It's just like he's tidied things up a little. He was pushing on before. Nice line through that point as he works down again toward Can Am. Pushes right out wide toward the barrier. The hairpin around drop. Here we go. Around the Polaris hairpin. 80. And beautifully executed. Yeah. Left right five and a half, 100. He's dropped a little bit of time in that sector, but still retains the advantage over Left Adrian right Coppin. Right 100, left three. Is this pairing in the DS3 about to move to the top of the power stage? Into the final sector. 100. Only a few corners to go now. Right three, narrow. 150. Now calm to this pairing look. In the heat of competition, points right for the championship is what they're fighting for. Oh, bit of push, bit of push. Yes, go, 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 go. Julia okay. urging them to the line. They get there, but look at it. There's nothing in it. Two tenths of a second over Coppin. Tony Sullins, fabulous job, mate. Point two of a second faster. Good run. Unbelievable. That's really cool. Point two is pretty close, isn't it? Well, it's unbelievably close, and that's what this is all about. It's a precious stage. You actually get the adrenaline going through here, don't you, when you're walking through? Yes, I was having a big dip through there. I was, I was trying as hard as I could. Tell me about under brakes, where we were just near the start and finish. The car was twitching and moving, and when you've got all this going on in a car that's not suited to this sort of package, it's a, it's pretty hairy from a driver's point of view, isn't it? Yes, exactly. I, and I saw what Molly did earlier, and I just thought, oh, don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall. So right. it was all good. Well done, mate. Do you think that time's going to be good enough to hold off the former champion, Simon? I think his car's got a fair bit of straight line speed. I might struggle to keep that, I'm sure. Well, let's see how it goes, mate, but well done. Thank you. So on the Kumo replay, we'll take you to the point where Molly crashed in the lead up. And this is what he was talking about, trying to arrest that speed and how squirrely it was under brakes. And just getting that rhythm is what he was looking for on the run toward the finish line, ultimately to recoup some time. Simon Evans and Ben Sissi, fastest qualifiers, mate. Fabulous to have you back in the championship. Welcome back. Mate, thanks very much. It's fantastic to be here. Put the weather on for us, and the little Honda Civic is absolutely singing. And to have you back, this is your first real involvement in a power stage. How you found it so far? This is sort of pressure cooker stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I guess, you know, but being lucky enough to win four titles, I reckon that's pressure cooking <laughs> stuff too. So, no, look, you know, it's all about the racing for me, and uh, just the fact that I'm here on the start line in the Civic, I'm absolutely excited. It says it all, mate, out there. I know, I don't even have to ask you what you're going to be like, because I know you're going to have a crack at it. Good luck, eh? Thank you very much. Underline that word, Mr. Excitement back in the championship. It is terrific too. Evans is underway on the power stage. Awesome through the sequential gearbox, that Honda singing high in the RPM range. 200. If you followed the championship for years, you'll know that it was a great partnership between Simon Evans and Sue Evans, his wife, that took them to four Australian titles. Now partnered by Ben Searcy. Ben co-driving for him as we come towards the Can-Am hairpin. 
Awesome line through there. Look at the marker too. Four hundredths of a second is all that splits them. Fast left three line. Three line, 300. That's the fastest top speed we've seen through there in the two-wheel drive class. Justin Dow was clocked at the fastest of the four-wheel drive guys at 153 k's an hour, but not much in it between the two classes. Just pulls the car up, Evans, on the limit. Equal on the time from the first stage. 200. Turn fast right three. 200. Very fast right three. 200. How good does this little car sound in full flight? Just struggling a little bit off the turn there. Not much. Turn easy right four, hairpin around the barrel. Easy right four around the barrel. Through the speed zone again. Sets it up nicely, goes very deep at the Polaris hairpin. And look at the tyre smoke from Evans. 200. Fast right four, sharp tighten. Based on what we've seen so far, this is going to be a good time. He just needs to complete this final sector now. Left three, late Titan. Very fast. Left three, late Titan. 200. Turn fast. Right three, sharp, narrow. Right three, sharp, narrows. 300. A beautiful day here in Bustleton. What a way to open the first round of the 2015 championship. Is Simon Evans on return about to win the power stage? Tank former's car looks nice. And he does it convincingly. Well done, Simon Evans. And Ben Searcy celebrates with a slide in the Civic Type R. Simon Evans, that's about the tidiest I've seen you drive. I reckon I know how flamboyant you are. Congratulations, you won the stage. 1.3 faster. Good job. Thanks very much, mate. That's an absolutely awesome effort for all the boys. You know, they've worked hard with the Civic. It's an older car and uh, we've worked really hard through the off-season and tried to make it as best as we can. And uh, it's just a credit to the team. You know, the boys at Evans Motorsport, fantastic job. It's a perfect start to a great weekend. So hopefully I can back it up out in the forest. So I'm going to be trying my best. And like I said, all I want to do is beat my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and we know that too well. You're 1-0 so far, mate. Well done. <laughs> Beautiful. We've missed him being a regular in the championship, but he hasn't lost any of the edge, as you can see here from the Kumo replay. The execution around the Polaris hairpin. Look at as he gasses up the Civic. Loads of tyre smoke and a huge advantage at the end to win the power stage. You keep talking about wanting to beat your brother. And you're 1-0 so far. I know in the back of your head you're thinking about tomorrow as well, though, but good start. Yeah, look, fantastic start. As I say, extremely happy about it. So, yeah, Eli's the man, and look, he'll come back, and it's going to be a tough rally. And you can catch that tough rally next week, right here, when we bring you all the highlights of the first round of the East Coast Bull Bars <laughs> Championship. Coming up next, though, classic cars skidding around on classic WA roads. It's a recipe for entertainment. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship, coming to you from the Quick Forest Rally. Three cars made the long haul across the Nullarbor Plains to try their luck on the infamous ball-bearing road surface. With a new Bates Motorsport engine in the Celica, Clay Badnock was here to gain the only thing he didn't have, experience. Five left, tightens to four and a half. That's what we're here for, isn't it? To a, right. a new challenge, so... You know, it might be a bit, bit, um, bit tricky in places, but it's, it's good fun all the same. Four times Australian Rally Champion Neil Bates knows that feeling all too well. The roads over here are probably the most difficult in the championship. Like, it's, um, you know, very, very slippery, very important to stay on the swept line and also very technical. So, uh, you know, for, for newcomers, it's probably the hardest rally in the championships. For Bates... Ferndale is his favourite and the most challenging. 
Look, it's got a lot of different speeds, like it's got some incredibly fast sections and then it turns off into some incredibly tight sections. It's got a lot of steep downhill, a lot of steep uphill, so you know, people when they're going uphill get really confident then it starts heading downhill and all of a sudden they brake too late and you know, and it takes some adjustment to go from really fast stuff back into the tight stuff. So because it's got such an enormous amount of variation in the road uh, terrain, it, it makes it harder for people to, to manage. Graham Miles knows just what he's talking about. His restored Commodore is no mean feat to handle on the marbles, even though it's his home rally. Yeah, it's pretty hard work, I tell you. Eh? <laughs> just really battle of attraction. It's just the, 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 the roads are just so loose and dry, I've never seen them like it here before. Miles and wife Kathy don't share Bates's enthusiasm for Ferndale. Theirs is Healthway, with its sweeping corners that favour the big V8. Things didn't start well for ACT's Trevor Stilling. Testing after the long trek over from the east revealed a blown head gasket and cracked cylinder head in the Nissan Stanza. It was brakes, though, that slowed he and Cole Trinder through the opening stages until they changed a master cylinder. The second heat brought a change in attitude. you just got to be aggressive and stay on it, otherwise you're off the road, which we've been a few times. Prophetic words, two more spins in SS12, chasing down Clay Battenock. Yeah, we can sort of do it that way. Is that it? No, no. Battenock was keeping the stanza at bay. Conscious the chances of beating his experienced opponent probably required a setback from the rally champion. And that too, despite the sister Salika grappling with tyre issues. Got a couple of punches today, so it's been you know, quite a few rocks pulled out onto the road, and, but all good. Good all right, vintage Bates in his classic car. Clearly retirement from the main game has only rejuvenated his passion for rallying. And that main game can be seen next week at the same time, same channel. Just check your guides for time to join us then. I'm Greg Rust. Bye for now. Today's coverage is made possible by Kumo Tire, Petter Suspension, Armoral, STP, Co Tire, Can Am, Polaris, and our supporting partner, East Coast Bull Bars, world's best alloy bull bars.